We're gonna, what we're talking about in, uh, today is the 2010 edition, which is a simplified and revised and much expanded brain integration therapy manual. And in here we have everything you need to be your child's own therapist at home and see the same results that I saw in the school setting. There was no magic to my doing it. It was the method that was working. So we're going to look at what are some of the things that are in there. The number one thing that we have in chapter one, it has an introduction to brain integration therapy. But is my child a struggling learner? How do I know they're a struggling learner? What does a brain model look like and why are we trying to follow that? Why are we trying to make connections? Chapter two talks about the four learning gates. The top three are the ones that we are going to address in the Brain Integration Therapy Manual. Visual tracking, that means the eyes converging as a unit. Tracking from left to right, we want that to be automatic so a child can have fluency when they're reading. The auditory processing, that's a learning gate and that's all the checklist is in there so you can determine if your child has that learning gate blocked, but you already know it. You already suspect it. You're just going to have it confirmed there. And that's going to give you all of those clues and then what your child needs. And then it talks about the writing learning gate. And that is for these wonderful kids that maybe they can read two and three years above grade level. They may be voracious readers, but you put a pencil in their hand and they're allergic to the pencil. They have a two by four between their head and their hand. We call it a dysgraphia when they're over age eight and even still making reversals or not putting letters below the line or can't get their thoughts down or can't line up math. That means their visual spatial system is out of whack and this is the easiest learning gate to get in using brain integration therapy, but it's also the most puzzling because it will make the child look like they're lazy, sloppy, and unmotivated. It's the most undiagnosed and the easiest to treat. And you'll get the checklist in here on that pay on chapter two of the four learning gates, and you'll be able to exactly tell which ones are blocked and which ones aren't. Then you're going to have in here the daily exercises that we do uh, Monday through Thursday which are just going to continue to keep the left and right hemisphere connected. Exercises, sometimes people have called them brain gyms, but brain gyms have many, many exercises, but these are part of them. They're part of Dr. Dennison's brain gyms, but these are the ones that only get at the midline. And because I have found for my students, they are the most powerful. So we only do a few of those. These exercises are great to keep the connections open once we've connected them, but they are not powerful enough by themselves to get a child out of a dyslexic hole, a struggling reader hole, but if they have a dysfunction or a glitch, they can, but not the children who are really struggling. For my group, the ones who needed an IEP and were really struggling, I needed to do that once a week brain training, and we're gonna talk about that. So. <clears throat> Chapter four is all the different exercises, the writing and exercise. We have this so carefully illustrated. We have every step that you're going to do done with a student. Students of various ages, so you can see how it works. So the exercises should be easy to follow. If not, we have some videos that have the exercises on too, but the illustrations are very clear in here. Simple, easy to follow. Then we have the once a week, chapter five, brain training, which in the older manual we called repatterning. They are the same thing. This is the, this is the power tool. This is the one that takes from, you know, you've ever screwed a screw in with a manual screwdriver and you knew all the effort it takes. Wouldn't you have loved a power screwdriver? And that's what this does. The all important brain training our brain um, repatterning, the most important part that increases connections between the left and right hemisphere dramatically. That's why now I can so confidently have a child who is not reading, I can have them not reading a word, and I know by the end of the year, I'm gonna get a three-year growth in that child if they really start out that low. Otherwise, always a two-year growth. We have newspaper articles where 
where they're, they, they've written about the education of Joshua, an autistic child, who, yes, he had an autism, but they didn't recognize he had a dyslexia. He went from not even spelling his name right, and he's in the paper, his name was Josh Decker. He left the C out of his name. He wrote every letter backwards. Doing the brain training, by the end of the year, he was reading Star Wars books. Now, the spelling, he was spelling a little bit, but not, that didn't keep up with the reading. The spelling always comes in second. But he was reading. And so they went on to high school, and they wanted the high school um, teachers to do the brain uh, repatterning and brain training with them. And they, they didn't know how to, so we need to train them how to do that. We see this all the time. In fact, that's the first time I know that, you know, at the autism, often they have gaze aversion. And Josh had tremendous gaze aversion. I didn't know this brain training would help the gaze aversion. But after eight weeks, they ha we had a, um, a staffing, and the parents brought the neighbors, and they said, what did you do? It's like Joshua woke up. He now does not have gaze aversion at all. Why? Because autistic children and Asperger's children tend to be left brain bound, literal, literal, literal. We need to get into the right brain, which is the whole picture. And when we get them into the whole picture, that's where we want to go so they can see when they don't understand and they can't take social cues, what happens is they're taking every single word that the person's taking and the left brain's details, 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 data, data, and they're trying to store it there. The right brain sees the whole picture. So that's why they don't get jokes. With a joke, you have to see the picture in your head and then you see where the anomaly is and, it's, it's, and it is um, it's funny. I have, was so surprised to see the difference this makes with autistic children and Asperger's children. Are my three-year-olds who don't have speech, developmentally delayed speech, we do the preschool repatterning, our preschool brain training that's in there. Having them lay down, look up or left to light up that right brain, and the parent does a cross crawl with them. Dramatic changes is what we see. Then we see, so the brain training, we have auditory brain training in there, visual brain training. We have it set up in a sequence. So you will know exactly how to help your child. It's not like it, it's going to be a mystery to you. It may be a mystery in terms of new thoughts that you've had, but it will not be a mystery in what to do to help a child. So if they have, we're going to do an, in, in, we first tell the brain the intention. Once a week, this brain training is giving the brain the intention, like I want you to work on eye tracking. Then we're going to use the eyes to transfer to that to the right brain. We know that when we look up or left, we light up the right brain. We want this to become automatic. Then we're going to have them do the cross crawls to tell that right brain to take it over. We add music to stimulate that. Then we have them stop every little bit and tell the brain notice the process. When we do, the brain says, oh, I get it. I get it. I need to make connections. Oh, all right. I will. And each week when we do this, it's almost a cumulative. It's like making a little fiber optics. First, we don't see a difference in the reading or eye tracking. But you saw, like we read with that boy, after 10 weeks, the more we do it, the more we do it. After 10 weeks, he said, oh, the words aren't wriggling anymore. Oh, I can see them easily. Oh, reading so much easier. That's what we see, and that's what you'll see at home, too. So the midline is incredibly important. We have many pictures in here. We have daily charts that you can use. We have a daily lesson plans in here so you'll know how they work. Daily charts so you know how to be your own therapist. And we have support via email. If you can't tell from the checklist, you say, I'm not sure, then go to the case studies. We have a case study about a child who had one learning gate blocked and what we did to correct it. Another who had both learning gates blocked, what we did to correct it. Another had all three blocked, what to do to correct it. Many of the kids have all four, what to do to correct it. You'll be able to find your child through the case studies. We have our daily lesson plans in there so that you can follow those and by the end of the year have the same result we did. And more importantly, you'll get our support because if you buy this and you do this, I will email and stick with you until we see the changes. We test them every three months using a quick recognition test, which is in here, so that we make sure this program is working. We don't want to just go by theory. We need to have it proven. 
you save a lot of money. Many parents, one mom said, oh, we saved $4,000. My child said they needed vision therapy for $4,000, and we did this, and it worked, and his eyes worked together as a team. So she told everybody at the booth, don't do anything different. In other words, follow it exactly. Do we mean to say this is going to replace all vision therapy? We don't mean to say that, but try this first because it's inexpensive. If they need some vision therapy, we're so glad that's there. There's a program out that you know that does rhythmic writing for to change the, uh, the writing problem. That's a great program, but it takes three years and it's $5,000. This takes only 15 minutes a day and it, you, just the cost of the manual. There's another program out there because we've known for a long time midline is so very important. Anything we do on midline is incredibly powerful. So the midline is another midline program where you, um, you take your child to a therapist and every, every three months they design more of a program for you. It's $500 each time. What they do is they believe that a child needs to be uniform dominant, that their ear and eye and hand and foot all need to be on the same side to make learning easy. I have not found that to be the case in my school setting. 75% of my struggling writers were mixed dominant. They used their right hand and their left eye. I found I didn't have to change dominance, and I'm glad because in the school setting we couldn't have. When I did the brain integration therapy and I just told the brain, hey, you need to make more connections, dominance took care of itself. There are many of you out there who are mixed dominant, who are right-handed and left-eyed. You've not had to change your dominance you found that your brain accommodated it. These children, their brain can accommodate it too. We just need to tell it how to do that. So this is a most wonderful therapy program. It is for the price of this program you are going to get, it would be the price of one visit to, to many of the therapists. So if you think that your child matches any of this, don't hesitate to look into this. Don't think it's more than you can do because it isn't. We've got wonderful reports and we'll stick with you and we'll help you with it. So just look at it on the website and see what you think, but it is the number one core unit that I use to change children's processing.